We are about to get underway with our first bout of the evening, 170 pounds. And Stobie in the red shorts. Stroud, black. Stroud attacking right away. Going heavy onto that lead leg, uh, which is interesting just because Stroud coming from a strong grappling gym, but trying to establish the fact that he's not just a grappler as he shoots it for a takedown. <laughs> Sometimes you want your opponent to guess, right? Get them comfortable in the stand-up realm, and then you shoot your takedown. Yeah, Stobie looking to check, and he just goes in for that takedown. Uh, Stroud doing a good job of pinning him in, his head positioning in the right position to keep Stobie from uh, basically putting all his weight on top of Stroud. So some good cage work from both these gentlemen. Uh, the big thing is Stobie's not letting both butt cheeks be on the fence, which is keeping him from hitting that Uchimata trip attempt. The key, though, didn't have a strong overhook, which leads to Stroud taking his back. Stroud in control, lacing that leg. So the, the, the key is here is you see how deep that hook is and how it crosses over that. Keeps it when he drops down here. Uh, staying tight and keeping that chest on back pressure. The most common place where you see this is BJ Penn during his prime, where he'd lace that over, keep that hook nice and tight, and when he'd roll him over, he'd look where he is. He has that nice pressure, chest on back pressure, which allows open access to that neck when it's available. It's almost like BJ Penn is one of the forgotten ones. I think, you know, just because of what happened near the end of his career, where he fought past his prime, so to speak, People forget how he was one of the best to ever of all do time. it. Uh, to do it. And regardless. Yeah. So here, you see where he's kind of stuck, uh, where Stroud's stuck in this kind of no man's land, where he's half on the back and half kind of going to the mount. Still be doing a good job of, of putting the pressure on the body lock here, which makes it tough to keep that positioning. There's two fighters right in front of us. Now, when Stroud's doing a good job, what he was doing a good job was keeping control of that close arm, which stops Stoby from being able to scramble in. Uh, he's trying to soften up Stoby right now with those shots, which is going to open up that neck. Everyone seems to be under the impression if I just tuck my chin, I can't get choked, and that's definitely not the case. And especially if that is the case, these nice little shots here that, that Stroud's been hitting him with. Opens gonna it up. Oh, definitely. Right now, Stroud in full control. Racking up the points. 30 seconds remaining in our opening stanza. The big thing to remember, it's only three minutes. It's not a very long time. And especially when you're setting up your takedown, you're setting up your submission, so to speak, in this case, it's not a whole lot of time to work. you got to get after it in these amateur fights. Yeah, you can hear the corner right now saying, attack, attack, go. And 10 seconds left, and... Although controlling and doing really well there, beautiful job by Stoby. Getting back up, yeah. And a takedown attempt as the bell signifies the end of the round. So even with that, uh, that suplex attempt, you watch that backbending throw didn't happen because of the weight by Stroud was on his heels as opposed to being on his toes. And he ended up sliding up because he doesn't have that hip drive getting underneath the Stoby. Stoby obviously staying heavy as possible. No one wants to get German suplex onto their <laughs> neck, obviously. But a tough first round for Stoby. You know, this is the first fight. You know, we see it all the time. People who train with these tremendous champions, and then they get into their first real fight, and sometimes they're fought out because they've been fighting so much in the gym. And this, hopefully that's not what happens. There's also a difference that I've been told many, many times. Obviously, I've never been inside of the cage uh, competing in amateur or professional. I have sparred, and I feel that I've sparred hard. But I've always been told there is such a huge difference from hard sparring and getting yourself ready for a real fight and the fight itself, whether it's amateur or professional. So it's, it's that talk about flicking that switch over, being able to have that killer instinct, that fight instinct, as opposed to just like, oh, I'm training hard. Yeah, you can train hard, but sometimes your, your brain doesn't switch over that this is fight or flight time and it is time There's a to, safety element there. Exactly. Sometimes some guys are just go for broke. You know, you watch guys like Brian Stan, and I hear stories at the gym. He wasn't always the best in the gym, but you watch him in fights, <laughs> and he brings guys down. Beautiful round by, uh, by Max Stroud in there. Perfect game plan, setting up with leg kicks all the way into taking that back and controlling throughout the entire fight. Round two about to get underway. Stroud in the black shorts. Stobie in the red, John Ramdeen, Mitch Clark, cage side, and wow, a front kick to the face knocks the mouth guard out of Stroud. 
Dang, that was on point there. Uh, I think Stroud knowing that he has a beautiful knee tap takedown by, by Stoby uh, and finishing up. I think he knows he's behind and he has to show some urgency and be a part of this fight. And same with Stroud, like you pointed out, only three minutes. So if you're in this position, you have to fight tooth and nail to get out of this position. One takedown can change everything. I get a takedown heavy and I stay heavy in this body lock position like Sobey was trying to do. If you take a look, actually right there, Stroud was trying to attempt to go into Sean Williams guard, which or as I like to call it, fat guy rubber guard. Uh, sometimes our knees don't bend that way, so we have to have nice options like here, foot on hip, looking to control from the bottom, because Stobie's staying heavy and looking for that body lock pass. See here, looking to lock those hands and hop over nicely. Beautiful pass by, uh, by Stoby. He almost just has to get past that knee line. Beautiful guard by, uh, by Stroud, to be honest. Good regarding there. And we saw Stoby looking for north-south, but limited in his options in amateur. 100%. You, like, you can ground and pound, but there's no elbows. And when you're in this close, those elbows make all the difference, right? Then right here, even he's sitting up and he's looking for that head pinch or that body pinch look over. So, look, so it allowed him to set up, going for that guillotine. No knees allowed no here. No knees, but he's crowding the guillotine. This is where people make the mistake. They drop back and they try and pull on it and the head pops out and no one's doing well. Anaconda choke perhaps. Uh, looks like, so it's exiting through the neck. So looking like a Dars variation there. Now just controlling the head is Stroud. Stoby needs to be getting, opening that space between his neck and his shoulder right now. That's where the urgency needs to be. As soon as, as Stroud gets closer and closer, that's what's gonna close that in and make that choke super tight. 45 seconds remaining in round two. Are you surprised that Stroud's still like on top instead of just backing away and trying to score with punches? considering how the first part of the round played out. I, I think that, that that staying in here and staying tight, it says a lot to the judges. You can't just always win by submission or knockout. Sometimes you have to realize we have to play the game. So here, staying tight on the takedown, getting that second takedown. But Stobie doing a good job of attacking, re-attacking that single. Head out, head out. Stobie taking, getting the takedown. Stroud trying to control the neck once again. Is he looking for a high elbow guillotine here? Nope, I don't think that's gonna happen. So what, so be doing a good job of flattening him out, taking away any leverage that Stroud can get. Two rounds in the books. And you hear Bill Mahud say, take a big breath to his pupil. The big thing here is he has to give a sense of urgency to his fighter, changing from this is hard sparring to this is a fight and you have to do something. You're down two rounds, in my opinion, in this fight. You know, although he got the takedowns, the more aggressive and more prominent grappling came from Stroud. Agreed. I mean, Stobie, a little worn out on the stool. But he's had to carry so much of Stroud's weight throughout this fight on his head, on his neck on his whole body, trying to finish those takedowns and to no avail. That can play a lot, not just on your physical, but on the mental as well. And what about the idea that you've got three minutes left, it's amateur, empty out the gas tank. Hopefully, if you can get the referee interested enough in the damage that you can inflict, this fight will be over. With amateur, that is definitely the case. It's always erring on the side of caution for these fighters at amateur. They're not getting paid. They don't need to absorb all that punishment. On the other hand, when you go for broke, when you look to leave on your shield, what happens is you leave yourself open. If you know you're gonna lose regardless, might as well go for broke. Last round, about to get underway. Max Stroud in the black shorts. Not breathing heavily at all. Now the grappling's gonna be a little bit interesting. If we take a look at both these men, they're covered in sweat, which is gonna make it harder to get those body lock takedowns that they've been going through for this round. Oh, a right huge right hand. Probably the most successful strike of the fight. Or impactful. Oh, and another Ooh. one. Beautiful and look at time. this. Stoby going after it. 
So, and, and is that the right decision, right? You know, you're tagging him, you're touching up Stroud. Why go for the takedown when you're obviously in the driver's seat in that, in that area right now? And see, you initiate the takedown. His only option right now from this position is for that Uchimata, kind of that, out, that, that trip for the judo throw. But right now, it, you've switched the momentum back to Stroud. You had all these advantages, and you're not taking advantage of them. And it seemed like Stroud was hurt. 100%. That, that right hand was hard, but it was the left hook that came in nice and sharp and on point. And a thunderous knee lands for Stroud. Stoby responds with a knee up the middle. So right now, Stroud's just going back to chipping away. You know, he might have eaten, you know, three or four very, very solid shots. But at the same time, he's working here. He's controlling the cage. He's grappling at a higher level right now in the eyes of the judges. It's not just who landed the one hard punch. It's not like boxing in that sense where who lands the hardest strike of the round. What it is, is it's over the whole round itself. And right now, Stroud is doing a better job of controlling the pacing of the fight. And just the more damaging blows in this clinch position. He landed a dozen knees to the thigh. It's kind of hard to kind of like let the audience always know how much that hurts. <laughs> and the next day, tomorrow, it's going to hurt even worse. worse. At the same time, he's wearing on Stoby. His weight is on him the whole time. He has a nice little bylock, which is impressive considering the size of these gloves. The only thing that, that Stroud is doing is he's keeping too much space between their hips, which is allowing Stoby to land those hard strikes up the middle of the diaphragm around that belly button region, which are, oh, they really suck the life out of you. We saw Stoby trying to redline it there to escape. No avail. And he gets a takedown, but Stroud quickly makes his way back to the upright position. Really comes back to my center at the beginning of the round. They're both so sweaty that you don't have that control because you can't lock up with your elbow with that elbow pinch, which allows for those takedowns to not be as impressive. What happens is, see, right here, that's the way to go. The return to mat format of folk style wrestling. See, this is what he needed to be doing this entire round. And unfortunately, was it enough? Wow, Stoby ending strong, but will it be enough? Stroud with that nice little swagger as he walks back to his corner in his head, probably saying, I have those first two rounds and potentially half of that third round. It's tough to judge that third round, but in my opinion, Stroud has done enough to win those first two rounds and stealing a lot of that momentum that was behind Stoby with that, that name behind him of who he trains with and who's the training partner of. I would have to agree with you. I think that Stroud did enough. I think he made the right decisions throughout this fight. I think his control was enough to rack up the points and get the victory. But if you look at some of the bright spots in this fight, Stoby had those bright spots. He was definitely more impressive when he was on and he was controlling. Now, you can't take away from the fact that Stroud took the back, held the back 100%. for the entire first round. For him, showing a tremendous showing. Stoby showing glimmers of greatness in this fight, but not enough, in my opinion, to show that he should be the winner. Does he have potential? I would definitely say so. His tremendous potential showed some great stand-up and even some great grappling. The only thing is he's just overshadowed by Stroud's ability today. A valuable lesson for both fighters. Information they'll have stored in their memory bank for the next time they step inside of the cage. That's the key with amateur fights, is it's all about that experience for when it's for real. I'm not saying this isn't for real, but we're playing for keeps when you're pro. Stroud and his team having a little laugh, confident that things are gonna go their way. As we send it up to ring announcer, Ryan Roth.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have a decision. Judge Ziad Harb scores at 29-28. Judge Jason Tatlow scores at 29-28. And Judge Luke Boutin scores at 29-27. Your winner by split decision, Ian Stobie.